Hi, this is Blaine Cluton for Cluton Law. So one of the questions that I see fairly consistently is what to do if somebody's making false accusations against you. And I suppose generally it's good to take a step back and understand that broadly what we're talking about is false accusations in two different contexts, uh, usually anyway. The first is going to be in a criminal context, so that they're making false allegations against you of having committed a crime, and perhaps they have reported the crime to the police and the police are investigating it. This is one avenue, and I would call that more of the criminal avenue. The second one is false accusations against you in more of a civil context, meaning there's possibly a civil case that's pending, or they're just outright smearing you online, or um, on out in the public and the reason that I distinguish between these two is because it's going to change the way that you approach uh, your response to these false accusations so let's take these step by step the first one in the criminal context if you have false allegations uh, made against you in a criminal context you need to hire an attorney um, you can't possibly navigate and expect to uh, talk to the police and deal with all the investigation without help. And furthermore, um, I would never recommend somebody talk to the police when criminal charges are pending without an attorney. That's um, going to be fundamentally disadvantageous to you and um, it serves no purpose. There's plenty of um, research and videos online that can walk you through the dangers of trying to talk to the police your own if you're not represented. Um, so that's the bottom line. If, if there's a criminal case uh, possibly pending and there's some false accusations against you, you need an attorney. That's, that's all there is to it. Now, let's back up and let's look at this in the civil context and we have false accusations against you. The next is to understand what is the context of these false ac accusations against you and do you need to fight back against them and kind of holistically what's going on? So oftentimes the way that I see false accusations come along in my line of work is in the family law context. And uh, in, in the instances where, the, where folks are not represented by counsel um, or they are represented by counsel, there's generally some good uh, guidance and some steps that people should follow. And I think that overall, the thing that somebody should keep in mind are a couple of things. Uh, number one, if, if they're false, and that's the presumption here, it, if the allegations against you are false, then the truth is on your side and you need to keep that on your side and not stoop to their level and make false accusations back against the other person. Um, I sincerely hope that with the false accusations, the truth will ultimately come out and you'll be vindicated uh, against these false accusations. It's much more difficult to be vindicated if you've stooped to their level and you're now making false accusations back. Um, as an overarching understanding, I know that if there's false accusations against you, it's deeply, deeply troubling, and it can put you into a tailspin, and you can feel alone, and as if the person that you've always trusted in this world, and that was your partner, is now making these accusations against you. Maybe you had some red flags or some things that you wish that you would have noticed before, but now they've turned all their wrath and ire against you, and now you need to react. So, you're not alone. There's other people that have dealt with the same issue and there's other people that can support you through this process. So that's the first thing that you need to know. Uh, the second thing that you need to, to keep in mind is that if false accusations have been made against you, you should not be alone with that person anymore. You need to find a way to protect yourself from being alone with them in the future or at least have some sort of recording device or something so that they can't continue to make false accusations against you. In the same vein or in the same line of thought, if you have an attorney, all communication should be done through the attorney. And this will avoid any possibility of them misconstruing or taking your words out of context or saying that you said something you didn't if you're only going through the attorney. If you don't have an attorney, 
then everything needs to be in writing. And before you send something, you really need to think about whether or not you should be sending this, this item. And you know, there's a lot of tips and tricks for this where you write a message and then you think about it overnight and make sure that you still want to send it in the morning. There's rewriting exercises where you rewrite it three times before you send it. There's rereading to make sure you understand the, the context and the full communication of the last message, message that was sent to you. In any event, um, anytime that you're s sending communications and it's in writing, expect them to be read in court. And so you don't want to send something that you wouldn't want read in the courtroom. Um, the final thing to kind of keep in mind is um, as you're going through this, you are now seeing the actual person, um, the, the real person or the person behind the mask or however you want to describe it. But this person that's making these false accusations against you, it's I'm presuming that at one point they were on your side and maybe they made accusations against somebody else or maybe they were, I talked about red flags earlier, but now the gloves are off and um, you're seeing that real person. And as I mentioned in uh, kind of at the top of the civil side, the truth is on your side and you need to keep it on your side as you're going through the case. Um, again, the, the breakdown in this between criminal and civil is important to keep in mind. You need to understand what your ultimate goal and objective is in all of this so that you know how to appropriately respond. Um, and then I, I haven't at all touched on online uh, defamation, slander. Um, I haven't at all touched on about what to do if they're out in the community spreading these things about you. Um, other than uh, those kind of general ideas that uh, don't be alone with them. Don't send. Don't give them any more ammunition to use against you. Um, but if you need more information about uh, online or some of those different avenues, I would definitely recommend talking to an attorney. And if you don't talk to an attorney, I would reach out for more resources um, if you're looking in this particular area. But these these guidelines are are a good way in general. To be conducting yourself anytime that there's false accusations against you um, but uh, certainly uh, if you're looking for more i would uh, seek out more information this is blaine cluton for cluton law thank you